Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Bulma, which is part of the Dragon Ball line. Not to be confused with Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super, for those of you that don't know, this is from before all of that. So I'm guessing some of you are younger and maybe aren't aware. There is a series called Just Plain Old Dragon Ball. It's kind of different than the rest, but it's interesting, and this is Bulma from that. And it, it's a mostly pretty cool figure. There are definitely some things we need to talk about. Some good, some some really good, some not so good at all. But mostly it's a solid figure. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands just about five and a quarter inches, which makes it uh, pretty close to 13 and a half centimeters. It's a fairly small figure, one of the smallest ones we've had in the line, and the packaging is very tiny too. If you're one of those people that's really a stickler about consistent... Stickler? A stickler for consistent packaging sizes. This one will stand out, but I couldn't care less. I just wanted to point that out for those of you that are interested. And here she is up against Master Roshi, so you can look at scaling. Of course, Dragon Ball has never been known for their proper scaling, but this is pretty close. It's pretty good. I mean, his head is like the size of her entire upper body, but that's okay. It's definitely going to look fine on a shelf, so no problems there. This figure is really good looking at first glance, and even in most cases upon further inspection. There's really clean paint around the arm. You can see her name on there is super clean. The gloves, very, very nicely done. They could have easily cheaped out and not done a good job, but they did. The belt is painted nicely. Her little band-aids on her knee and there's one on her face. Just all around really, really clean paint job. Very pleased with it. Very, very aesthetically pleasing. Here's the one problem I have with the paint job, and I put it in air quotes because it's not really the paint job, it's just the tip of the nose on mine is kind of blue, which isn't good. Now, they use a, a semi-transparent plastic for the faces. That's why you often see the nose is looking a little bit different because it's a very thin bit of plastic. This one has significant noticeable blue on it, so that's not great. The other two faces that came with it don't, so mine, it could just be mine, don't know. I guess we'll see once other people start to get theirs, but uh, it's definitely a little bit of a bummer. Though I probably wouldn't pose her with the winking face anyway, but it's still definitely an issue. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the accessories. So we have a total of three different faces. We have the winking one, which comes on her in the package. We have one where she's just kind of kind of smiling and looking straight ahead, and then one with an open mouth smile and looking off to the side. And I have to say, the eyes on this figure are done phenomenally. They're gorgeous. It's not really a paint job per se, but it's very, very clean, very nicely done. As far as the hands, uh, we have the fist hand and the gripping hand that come on her in the package. Then we have one kind of style pose hand, which makes it look like she's kind of pulling on her glove. We have two like kind of relaxed hands, one kind of wide open finger style pose hand, one trigger finger hand, one pointing finger hand, and then one hand with a peg in it for gripping the dragon radar. And so we do have our dragon radar, which is done really nicely. I was worried that they weren't going to be able to get those little black lines on there cleanly, but they did. It's awesome. And since we have the Dragon Radar, of course we need a Dragon Ball, which is again done very nicely. Nice translucent orange plastic. The stars are painted very cleanly. We do have her little goggles. Of course, they're just painted, not actually functional, but they do hang around her neck, so that's cool. You saw on the turnaround, we do have her Uzi, which is so unlike Dragon Ball, but unlike Dragon Ball Z, but it is just like Dragon Ball. So we do have her Uzi, which is nicely detailed, and that will do it. I think that's a pretty good spread of accessories. I'm very pleased with it, and it's pretty good. It's odd that we don't have two fist hands, but we really don't need them for Balma. I could see people complaining about that, because every figure in the history of ever has had two fist hands. Not this one. I don't care, but it is something to note. All right, as far as articulation goes, it's actually pretty good. First thing to note, though, about it, this will look like it's movable. You'll see this when you swap out the faces. You'll see that and you'll be like, hey, that's a socket for a ball peg. It's not. Don't screw with this. You're going to end up tearing it. It's glued in place. Don't try to turn her hairpiece. It's not meant to come off. Or not meant to move. Or come off, for that matter. So as far as the neck goes, the neck is fixed, but the head is on a ball hinge. Basically your standard Dragon Ball ball hinge. It does peg in at an angle so you can lean side to side that way. So that does kind of negate the issues of a ball hinge, but it, it, it works pretty well. You can lean forward and back, of course, you can rotate. So as far as ball hinge necks go, this one's executed pretty nicely, so that's good. Give them a little bit of credit there. Still prefer my double ball peg, but this is good. For her, it, it works fine. Leaning is good. For the shoulders, you have your ball peg that connects the arm to the body. Doesn't have a whole lot of range. In fact, very little range, but then we do have the ball hinge. 
which function, functions very nicely. You can raise the arm all the way up on that side. On this side, even though this piece is soft-ish, it still definitely gets in the way. So that's a little bit more limited. But otherwise, the articulation's the same. Of course, we do have our full rotation. No problem there. You do get a bicep swivel out of that. So that's good because you don't have one anywhere else. And then for the elbows, I don't know what they were thinking. We have these very boxy hinges. They're, they're not good looking. I don't get it. They're functional, but, oh boy, they are ugly. They're so ugly. I don't understand why they did that. If you're going to do that, at least use a ball hinge, or at least a rounded, like an ovular shape, but having it just squared off like that is very ugly. It's not as bad as on the knees. We'll get that to that in a second. They're functional, but they're ugly. They're not necessarily going to be super noticeable, so let me just point that out. They're very, very ugly, but once you pose her, you're probably not going to notice it that much. So, you have that to consider. For the torso, single ball peg, single ball peg, phenomenal range. She is flexible, and it's very nice. You get some very minor gapping in certain poses, but overall, you are not going to have trouble posing her. It, it's incredible. It's really, really well done. Makes you wonder why, <laughs> why this one has such good range, and some of the other figures that are the fighters don't have the best range at all, but... I mean, that's like almost a 90 degree bend in her torso. So that's that's awesome. I love that. This is a soft piece, so it won't get in the way of the hips. And then the hips, basically built like a Figma. So you have a uh, ball peg for each hip. They don't go out that far, but that's definitely far enough for Balma. No problem there. Bringing the leg forward, eh, it's not bad. It's not all the way, but it's probably good enough again for Balma. It's fine. Bringing the leg back does work, and then you do get your thigh swivel. Yeah, if you don't get that part stuck on the outside, there you go. So you have your thigh swivel built in. It's very minimal. Uh, same thing on this side. I know some of you are wondering about her butt cheek. How does it look when you bring the leg forward? Not bad. It's one of the better instances we've seen of a butt cheek on an action figure. Look at Cammy, for instance. Hers turned out not so good. This one, pretty good. Okay, so now we have to talk about the knees, which I said are like the elbows, but worse. They're very ugly in a neutral pose. They just have huge, flat hinges on the back. Not great course you don't see them from the front so that's acceptable when you bend them this side's not as bad it's okay you still have the really flat hinges but you get decent range and it's not 100 percent noticeable but on this side it's just ew there's a big flat spot on the bottom it's a big flat spot on the top it is not an appealing joint it's a it's a really unappealing thing i don't like that don't like that at all. It's functional. Why'd they do that? I don't know. It should have just been a ball hinge. Would have been so much better looking. Wouldn't have cost any more. Don't understand that at all. For the ankles, we have a ball hinge, essentially, which lets the foot go really far back. That's good. It goes pretty far forward. Not super far, but far enough. And then you can rotate it for like a true ankle rocker. So she has probably the best ankles out of, let me think, yep, all of them. Out of all of the Dragon Ball figures, I think hers are maybe the best. I'd have to check specifically for that, but I'm pretty sure these are the best. They're really functional. So that's it for the figure. It's it's really well done, except for those ugly yet functional knees and elbows. I don't really know what's up with that, but it's something I could easily overlook. For me personally, I don't care that much. Objectively, it's a problem. That's why it's in the review. I can definitely live with it. So the only thing that really bugs me is the blue spot on the nose. That's probably not going to be universal. So I'm going to give this one the definite go-ahead. It's uh, really well executed. It's a very aesthetically pleasing figure. It's going to look great on the shelf. So go ahead and get it. Add it to your Dragon Ball collection and be a happy person. Thanks for watching, guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. It helps me out a whole bunch. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want, you might consider subscribing. And you might want to consider subscribing because I do have new videos up just about every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. We do stream at least three times a week where I'm sculpting, I'm designing a line of action figures. And then we do stream video game stuff too. Right now we're playing some Soul Calibur. Uh, pretty soon we'll be playing Smash Brothers and maybe even before that some Mario and Zelda. So plenty of stuff guys. So make sure you, you stick around for that. You might want to subscribe. Consider that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.